I'm going to show you how to find exact values with radians, and these are going to get more difficult now, so hang on, or it's going to get a little bit tougher. But good news, once we've finished these ones, it doesn't get any harder than this. I like this one, by the way, stop sign, get it, it looks like a sign curve. Uh, so I'm just trying to remind you how to do this stuff with exact values when you know the angle. So if you already know what angle you're looking for, so like a cosine of pi over 3 or something. So first step is, I think, to draw the angle, right? So you want to actually sit there and draw, like, where where is this going? Where does it finish? So maybe it finishes, like, here, something, you know, something like that. Okay, you want to draw a reference angle. That's because this could be anywhere, right? It could be, you want to draw, like, the, the shortest version of these. So it could be here, or here, or here, or here. Those are your reference angles, these smallest values, so 30 or 45 or 60, I guess, or 90, but those are easy. The harder ones are these ones. Then you use special triangles or another trick to do this. So the special triangles, remember, uh, we have the 30, 60, 90 one. So 60 here, 30 here, and 90 degrees here. It goes 1, 2, root 3. And if it's 45, 45, 90. Okay, if that's 45 degrees and 45, this is 90 here. And this goes 1, 1, root 2. So that's one trick. Or I'm going to show you another one. I'm going to call it the hand trick. So I'll show you that one on the next slide, I think. And you're supposed to, of course, use the quadrants to check the sign. So that's, remember, depending on where it finishes. So all students take calculus. So that tells you that, you know, all are positive here. Here only sine is positive. Here only tan is positive. Here only cos is positive. That's why we have this ASTC business here. Like that. This is a good way to do it. So let's see if we can do this. I've got a nice hand trick for you, so that's in, instead of using the special triangles, this way is the way I personally prefer. I like this way way better. So let me show you this. So uh, as a student actually sent me this little meme, and I was like, oh, this is great. I mean, it's a variation on a trick that I learned as well. So uh, here's the trick. You have to take your left hand and hold it like this, although if you don't have a left hand, I guess you can take your right hand and flip it. But uh, there we go. So you take your hand like this. Now, what you do is you flip down the finger corresponding to the angle you want. You have to have it in degrees. So it goes 0, 30, 45, 60, 90. So let's say I wanted, uh, well, I'll explain it in a second. So you first hold down the finger that you want, it's like the angle you're looking for. If you want it for 30 degrees, you would hold down your pointer finger, for example, your index finger. Uh, then you count the fingers to the left or to the right of it. If you're looking for sine, you go to the left. If you're looking for cosine, you go to the right. And the number of fingers, that's what goes here. See, this is square root of something over 2. So you take the square root of that number, divide by 2, and there's your answer. Let me show you what I mean here. So we have sine of pi over 4. Well, you have to know how many degrees that is. And if you're not sure, it helps to maybe just try to draw it. Remember your unit circle, this is 0. This is pi if you're going around, like this right here. And that means this right here must then be pi over 2. That means this must be pi over 4. How many degrees is that? Well, this is 180 degrees. That's half of that, which is 90. This must be half of that. Ah, it's 45 degrees. So now I know my reference angle. Maybe I'll write it in a different color. My reference angle then, I know is, reference angle, is 45 degrees. Yay! And if I know it's 45 degrees, I can use any trick I want. But let's just say you use this hand trick. So you hold down your middle finger. So watch me carefully. I'm going to do it for me. Uh, wait, oh, so I'm holding down my middle finger for 45. I'll flip it so it looks like this for you. Okay. Now I want sine. Sine is fingers to the left. So notice to the left, there's two fingers to the left. Therefore, the answer is root 2 over 2. Isn't that awesome? Done. <laughs> that was really fast, wasn't it? Now, you could have done it using uh, special triangles. You could have said, hey, what's the sine of 45? Well, you'd say that sine is um, opposite over hypotenuse, which is 1 over root 2. And you'd think, wait a second, that's not the same thing here. But it turns out it is. If you remember your thing with thirds, you can also write this as 1 over root 2. Because there's a trick. It says that you can always, you know, if you have a root on the bottom, you can always multiply the top and the bottom by root 2 like this right here, and that'll give you root 2. And root 2 times root 2 will be root 2 squared, which will just give you 2. So they're actually the same. So just so you know, it's actually the same thing. Let's do cos of pi over 3. So let me try to just draw that one. So this one right here is a 0. This is pi radians. Pi over 3 is a third of that, so it's like up here, right? Pi over 3. If I think this is 180 degrees. 180 divided by 3 
is 60 degrees. Ah, so now I know my reference angle. Like I said, if you've done this a lot, you'll just know that pi over 3 is 60 degrees. But reference angle is 60 degrees. Great. Now I know to use this trick. So I'm going to use my hand, and I'm going to um, I'll flip it for you like this. So then if you look at me, then you'll see I put down my 60 degree finger, and I want cosine, right, which is to the right. How many fingers are to the right? There's only one, isn't there? It's just my pinky. So it's root 1 over 2, but square root of 1 is just 1. So the answer then is just going to be 1 over 2. No square roots needed. So there we go. See how fast that was? It's actually a neat trick. I really like this trick. It's quick. The trick is though you have to bring things into a reference angle. If you did like you know 3 times pi over 4, you have to think about if it's going to be positive or negative. But otherwise, this really works. Now you could have done it again with your... Um, 60 degrees here. You wanted sine. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Uh, sorry. Do we want uh, 60 degrees? We want a cosine, sorry. So cosine of 60 degrees, ka, that's adjacent over hypotenuse. It's 1 over 2. So you could have seen it from that or from this hand trick. Doesn't matter how you get there. All right, so let's keep going. Let's do some more examples. I'm just using this uh, just to remind you here. So let's make them a little bit harder with 5 pi over 6. Well, it really helps to first draw your angle. So let me start by doing that step, all right? So I'm going to draw my angle. Let's see where it ends up. This is 0. This is pi. If I want pi over 6, do you notice I'm doing a reference angle? Everything's going to be related to these pi over 6s here. So I'm going to have, let's see here. This is going to be, this is pi over 3. This is 2 pi over 3. Okay. Let's just see if that helps us. I'm going to just start doing pi over 6s now. This is pi over 6, 1 pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6, 4 pi over 6. This here must be then 5 pi over 6. That's where my angle finishes. So this is actually my angle here. That's the one I'm looking for, this one right here. This is it. It finishes here. So that's why I said draw a reference angle. So let me actually try to draw this thing. So now I know it's something that goes like this. That's what I'm focusing on, is this piece. And what's this pi over 6? Well, pi over 6 is, let's see, it's a third of pi, which is 60 degrees, half of that, which is 30 degrees. So now I even know, maybe I'll make my triangle bigger. I even know that this right here is an angle of, I didn't draw it to look like it, but this is actually 30 degrees. Now if I do my 30, 60, 90 stuff, this is 60. And remember this goes, now keep in mind it's been flipped over though my 30, 60, 90 business, if I'm doing it uh, with special triangles, um, across from a 60 is root 3, and the hypotenuse is 2. So I'll show you that. So across from a 60 is root 3, the hypotenuse is 2, this must be 1. So then if I want to do the sine of this, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so that's how I know it's going to be, so I'll do the sine of pi over 6, well actually I'll say 60, uh, 30 degrees, I mean, I'll say that's this, at least reference angle, is 30 degrees. I didn't write it down. I should have, actually. I could go reference angle equals 30 degrees. That's the key here. I should have written that down. So I'm going to show you the special triangles if I want the sine of 30 degrees. All right, so if I want to do the sine of 30 degrees, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So that would just be sine is uh, yeah, OH. So that would be just 1 half. Okay? Now, if I do this, though, um, keep in mind that was one way to do it. The other way was to use your hand trick. If you just wanted sine of 30 degrees, you could have also done it with this hand trick. Hide your, uh, put down your this finger right here, and if you do the sine, sine is to the left, so it's just 1 over 2. So that's how you get this. Now, we're almost done. We've got the exact value. We've got 1 half. We just have to check for the quadrants. Remember, double check where it finishes. A, S, all students take calculus. It finishes, remember in this quadrant up here? That's the last little thing to check is if it's a positive or negative. It finishes up here. What's positive here? Sine is positive. Is this sine? Yes. So now I know for sure then my answer is going to be just 1 half. That's going to be my answer. So I know then the sine of 5 pi over 6. That's what I'm doing now. The sine of 5 pi over 6 is also exactly 1 half. I didn't have to change the sine. So yay! So that was, that's an example of a, a, a pretty tough one, I think. This isn't that simple. Let's do cos of 5 pi over 6, so the same idea. 
So this time, uh, thankfully we don't have to reinvent the wheel here because we've already done five pi over six. We've already figured all this out. We just wanted the cosine of this. So do you see it's, it's actually the same as above? We have the same idea here. So we could see it with this special triangle here. We're same place here. So we did it with a special triangle here. Whoops, I didn't draw it very nice here. This is my 30 degrees. This is a really bad triangle. This is 60. This is one root three and two. Well, if I wanted to do, remember my reference angle is still 30 degrees, right? This hasn't changed. Reference angle is still 30 degrees because that's what a pi over six is. I just got five of them. So that told me that's why I knew I finished there. So if I do my reference angle of 30 degrees, let's see now. Reference angle of 30 degrees. Mm, I want the cosine of 30 this time. Instead of the sine of 30, I want the cosine. So cosine of 30 degrees, what's that going to be? Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's a root 3 over 2. Now you could have used your hand trick as well. Let's just double check that. What's the cosine of 30? Well, 30 is this finger right here, so I put that one down. Cosine is to the right. I've got three fingers to the right, so root 3 over 2. Boom! So see, didn't need the special triangles. Now you got to check your quadrants. Remember, my angle still finishes in the same place, right up here. And this is where we still have A, S, T, C. But because of that, it's only sine that's positive. Right, that was the only one that was positive here. So that tells me then that because I was looking for cosine, then the cosine must be negative. Cosine is negative here. Therefore, although the cosine of 30 degrees is this, I can say then the cosine of 5 pi over 6, which is 5 times 30, is going to be negative. So I'll have to throw a negative root 3 over 2. And there we go. Then I'm done. So see, these, these aren't all that simple. They, they do take some practice. So let me show you more.